So one other thing, I'm tempted to do this in live, but I don't under, I don't know like the interface, so it would be a lot of like, what did I do over here? I'm going to copy it over. Um, I guess I will. So let's write a spec for this. With that full disclosure, I am going to copy a spec that I wrote over the lunch hour, and just kind of talk through what I'm doing, and um, we'll just kind of work through this together. So. In your, in this project, if you go npm test, it's going to kick off Karma. And we're using a Phantom JS, which is a headless browser to go run its test against. And I have three passing tests. So I have one in app component and two in home component. This may be a little small. I saw somebody craning their head. Um, I apologize to that. And so let's do one for uh, users. So we'll go new, TypeScript file, we'll go users, component, spec.ts. Nope. And so the first thing that you need to do is import your Jasmine methods that you're going to use. And so this comes right from Angular 2.4 slash testing. So we'll do describe, expect it. Then we're going to import our component that we want to test, which is users from users component. And I, I want to say describe. I'm just going to cheat here a little bit. And I'm going to cheat a lot, actually. Don't get mad. Yeah. Oh, no. What happened? It totally split on the, oh, dang it. Gosh. All right. I'm back on track. Users component here. So let's write a test. I'm going to fado Pharaoh here, and we'll go it should be named users component. <coughs> like so, make sure, yep, so put another fat arrow in here. Now, you realize by me actually doing this, you now have to do this in the code challenges. Just saying. Yeah. All right, so let's write our assertion. assertion. We'll expect users.name to be users. I think I got this. I'm getting some. All right. If this actually works and I get this test to pass, Scott's going to do the robot for us. And if I was really truly doing TDD here, then um, I would have actually made this fail first. But boom. I know that's, man, I was so tempted to just jump in there and sing with you. So I have, my work here is complete. Components with lifecycle hooks and a test. Any questions before I drop the code challenge on you? Yes, sir, in the back. Um, question from chat. Is there any way to prevent a, or to get resolve functionality in a component? Um, so to pre prevent it from firing up before it gets results from an API call? I do not know. So in other words, you're saying like a blocking operation of, in terms of component router, like, or not component router, but in um, Angular 1, you had like, in this route, I have this promise that has to resolve before it renders. I do not believe there is a mechanism in place currently to do that. 
yeah, I don't, I haven't, I haven't heard of any kind of resolve, like route resolve functionality. Next question. Uh, just to go deeper into that question, there isn't a resolve, uh, but again, tying into, so this all happens around routing. So there isn't a resolve on the current router, but the router has lifecycle hooks that you can tie into. So you would use those lifecycle hooks uh, to prevent a component from being rendered by the router. So those lifecycle hooks can handle asynchronous operations. And so we'll get a lot more into this over the next couple of days. Um, a couple of things is one, you have the Elvis operator to say, don't render this thing until this exists. In other words, so it's this optional thing of like, if this doesn't exist, then just don't do anything with this yet. As well is by using the async pipe, which is really, really cool. You can say, when this asynchronous thing comes in from your service as a promise or an observable, then go ahead and render this. And so it's really cool because you can actually bypass the component altogether. And you don't have to say, like with a promise, it's like, make this call then. And then you say, you take the payload and you assign it to a property local to your like local state within your controller in Angular 1. You can still do it that way. But now using um, observables, you can simply say, hey, service, go get me this thing. And it's returning an observable. And then you can bind to that thing directly using the async pipe. And it would just render when it happens. So to that, I think the lifecycle hooks really take care of a lot of that. And I would much rather have the ability to hook into the lifecycle as opposed to doing a blocking operation on a resolve. And with observables, you take it even a step further of you just say, I'm going to push this to, your, to the view when this is ready, and I don't have to block anything. Yeah, there is a, um, a can activate lifecycle hook for the router that gives you access to the, the current parameters and the next component that's trying to render. And from there, you can return true or false, even after asynchronous operation. True, which means go, go to the next component being routed. False means stop routing. So that, that's what you would use. Um, but there really is an elegant way of getting the result of that promise onto the object for the next route, other than tying it to the next params. And that really, like, so that mechanism is good for authentication. In other words, can I even go to this route? You can simply say, you know, do they have, like, for instance, you know, a jot, you know, a token? Does it exist? Are they authenticated? Okay, let them go. And so having that ability to hook into that um, route event is good for that. But actually passing data and blocking data to pass it into the next, like, route change, um, I'm unaware of anything at this point. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't do that. I would stay away from that pattern. Then you have messy state 